Hey guys, welcome back to Organic Chem. Now we're going to do the last section of the organometallic chemistry, and that's the ruthenium catalyst. So ruthenium catalyst is important because it allows us to do some interesting chemistry. Now the idea is that this is called olefin metathesis. And what this does is, it, amongst many things, one of the things that it does is it allows us to uh, open or close ring systems by just cleaving the double bond. So if there's a double bond that is in a ring, you can open up from that position. Or if you have two double bonds on the ends of a carbon chain system, you can fold it around and close from there. Now, what's really cool is that normally you can't make rings that are like really large because they're not very stable. So if you want to make a five or six membered ring, you don't need grubs to do that. But if you have a really long carbon system and there's a double bond here and here, you can actually fold this around to make a huge ring with a double bond at the end. And that is very important because sometimes we need to build molecules like in the, in the, the drug industry or you know something to, re to, to mimic, let's say, a biological um, function in your body. So you might need to make very large ring systems and this is a way to do that. So this is one of the, the strengths of this olefin metathesis, okay? And so, um, by the way, olefin just means alkene, right? So olefin equals alkene. And what we're going to do is we're going to work, we're going to either break or, or we're gonna, somehow we're going to work with those alkene carbons to make new products. Okay. Now, these are all ruthenium based structures. So let's start by just looking quickly at the Grubbs catalyst. So here are two versions. There are many versions of the Grubbs catalyst. So I grabbed this right from your book. These are two versions. And again, what makes them different is really just the, the increase or decrease of reactivity. So in all cases, they have a ruthenium. And in this first case, the 1995 version, the first generation, it was double bonded to a carbon. And that's typically what we look at when we draw these in a simple, we're not going to draw these complicated things out. We just draw, like for example, we would just write RU with a CH2, or we might write RU with a double bond CHPH for benzene. But that's it. So we basically focus in on the left drawing. But this is another variation which they found to be even more successful when it comes to uh, making different chiral products or by reacting in, in, in certain areas that are very difficult for a smaller molecule to do. So this kind of decreases reactivity because it's so big, whereas this is smaller, so it might not uh, decrease the reactivity, make it more reactive in the site that we're working on. So, you know, you have variations of this, right? So this is a second generation version. All right, so but what we're going to do is we're just simply going to refer to it like this. I'm going to do that, but you might see it this way on your exam. It's just because, notice how there's a benzene here, so C double bond to ruthenium, and then there's a benzene, so they might draw it this way. Same thing. Okay, well, what this does is, like I said, it allows for us to connect alkene carbons together. So let's see how that works. So uh, the first one, A, let's talk about the general mechanism. So for example, this is going to be where these two alkenes have nothing to do with each other. So let's say, for example, I have an alkene like this, and I have an alkene like that. Now notice that they're terminal. They don't have to be terminal, but it's just a lot easier to learn when it's terminal. Otherwise, there's too many combinations. Okay, So this allows us to have only one combination of how they join together, um, assuming that each one of these, molecule A and B, are going to both join to make the new molecule, okay? You could have two A's and you could have two B's. So I'm just saying if one A and one B come together, I'll show you how that looks. So with ruthenium, and I'll write R-U-C-H-2 instead of C-H-P-H, well, what's going to happen is these two are going to come together, and it's always the same trend. The inner carbon of the double bonds are going to come and join and make a new double bond. So we're going to have a new double bond, and so since A has an ethyl on the left side of it, so ethyl, 
And since B has a methyl, we're going to put a methyl. Now, trans is favored over cis. So whenever possible, you go with the trans, right? This does not have any stereochemical issues, so you always make the major product trans, okay? So those are the two carbons. Now, these are the yellow carbons. And now the outer carbons, let's say this red one here and this red one there, they're just going to come together as a alkene separate from the other molecule. So the end result is that we're cleaving out two CH2 carbons and we're combining the other two sides together, right? That's the general idea of what's happening in this process. Now, there's a mechanism involved with this, but they don't focus in on this mechanism. So for this particular video, I'm not going to go over the steps of the mechanism because it, it tends to be a lot more than I have to show. And for now, I want you to get the key points of how to solve problems related to this, okay, without focusing in on the mechanism. So for now, I'm not going to go over that mechanism, but I think on the mega review, I might show it to you guys uh, just to give you uh, the, the full picture, but for now, it's not necessary. Okay, this is the general mechanism. Now, again, the most important thing is not necessarily doing this, but it's the next thing that we could do, which is more specific to either ring closure or ring opening. So let's talk about B. Let's talk about B, which is ring closure. So let's, this is where the power really comes in for this reaction. This is, you know, think about it, it won a Nobel Prize. So it's because of how many advanced molecules you could make from this reaction. That's why. So here's an example of that in a very simple way. So let's say, for example, we have a system, and this was like an old exam question. So let's say we have something like this with a carbonyl. And I was to add ruthenium with a CH2, right? Or some variation of that. And so these two are gonna to come together and it's the same idea. The inner carbons are gonna to join to each other and the outer carbons disappear. So we're gonna cleave the outer carbons and we're gonna join the inner carbons together. So when you look at this and you wanna number it, number the inner carbon one and then work around to the other inner carbon, four, five. So 1 and 5 are the inner alkene carbons. They're going to connect together. So we're going to have something that looks like this. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, where 1 and 5 are double bonded to each other, and 3 has a double bond O. So that's the answer, plus we're going to have an ethene because of these red carbons on the outside. right? So the outer carbon of the alkenes go and leave, and the inner carbons come together. Just don't forget the double bond is still there at the end. Okay, that's a very common mistake, right? So they'll give you an answer without that double bond there. All right, so that's an example of how this works. Now, again, I, I you know, maybe I'll show you, um, I wonder if I should show you the mechanism. Um, you know, I'll show you the mechanism, but just keep an eye. Here's the mechanism, and if you want, just ask the professors if you need to know the Grubbs mechanism. And the, ch the chances are that you don't, but I'll give you one example just so that it's clear what's happening, okay? So here's our, I'm going to do the mechanism for this one here. So we have this, and we're going to react it with an RU with a CH2. Now, the way it works is the ruthenium initially is going to connect to one side of this alkene or the other. So if it, let's say here, we're going to focus there. So the ruthenium is going to make a four-membered ring with this left side alkene. So it breaks the double bond, and you get ruthenium to come into it. So now let's see what's happening. So this is the red carbon. There it is. Okay? And so the red carbon is attached to the outer alkene carbon, right? And the inner alkene carbon from here, this one, is now attached to ruthenium. And so now what happens next is we're going to just cleave off the end. So this red carbon takes the double bond, and, uh, takes the electron and makes a double bond to the end. And this carbon takes the electrons and makes a double bond to ruthenium. And so at this point, we've got a ruthenium that's double bonded to a carbon that now has this right here, the rest of the structure. Plus, we've made an alkene from the red carbon that was next to ruthenium to begin, and the carbon that's in the outer of the alkene over here, this one, right? So that's what we have so far. And so that's the first series of steps. Notice that ruthenium goes into the inner carbon first. Now watch. Now we're going to have this now, this system here is going to continue, and the ruthenium now... <laughs>